Well, that fits pretty good. So I think this is like, I don't know, early 60s Nova. You can tell it's the way the seats flip forward like that. But sure fit nice in the truck. We'll have to go up three inches. I just scabbed some two by threes underneath it just to see how the seat fits. Feels pretty good. So I'm gonna have to make some mounts front and back for the seats. Okay, we got this sucker back. Well, I shouldn't say back. She's on the hoist. I'm actually bummed this doesn't have a drain. I thought all these ADEs had a drain plug. I guess not. So, anyways, the tranny's not working. I know there's something weird with the plug here, so I'm gonna pull the pan, see if I can see what's going on, because it's like the pins or something sketchy going on. Somebody had ripped the plug off when I got it. So, I know the pins were bent, but I don't know. I'm gonna drop the pan, I'm gonna have a snoop, see if I can find anything weird going on inside. And if that's maybe a problem why the tranny's not working. And then if that doesn't work, then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pull the transmission out. So, well, first things first, pop the bolts. Hopefully I can catch most of the fluid. Man, any of you guys have a trick? Other than slowly popping bolts and trying to get stuff off, or getting a super huge funnel, which I don't have. Ugh. We'll let this slowly drain and then slowly keep pulling bolts, I guess. The mess is minimal so far, but everything's going to have this nice oil covered layer on it, that's for sure. So. That filter looks pretty murky. Not sure what's going on there. But I got a new one today. So I don't know if that thing's just plugged or what was happening maybe. So I can't see anything weird down here. I uh, made sure all the pins were good up there in to the plug. So that seems all good. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to clean it up. Slam a new filter in. I don't know. Maybe the change is going to need a flush. But we'll see if it works. And then we'll go from there. So I think the trans works. I haven't set it on the ground yet to try. It does the motion in the air, so we'll see what happens. But uh, right now I gotta make some shock mounts because this is a bag truck. So normally what you do is you hit the lower part of the control arm and I gotta build an upper mount in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. forgot to show you the mounts. See if my everything will focus. Come on. So, there's the upper mounts. It's mounted to the lower control arm. So, shocks in the front. Now I gotta do the back. Alright, got her back on the ground here. Going to uh, fire it up. And, and see if we have some forward gear. So I came up with this shock mount um, because those lower mounts had these little studs for coilovers. I just used it for the upper mount. I just made myself a little bracket that'll go onto the frame, and I'm just going to weld a stud onto the bottom. 
uh, yeah, buzzer in and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so my first design worked like trash. Uh, the shocks weren't long enough. So, what I did is I put a tang off the bottom now and I just reused those studs. So, plenty of height now. Should be golden. All right, so we got our shocks in. Seen that, bags are in, air management. Um, the compressor's been wired. Still need to do a little more cleanup here. But essentially you have a feed going into your relay. Relay runs this. I do a switch power inside the truck to run the compressor, but I put it on a toggle, so it's on key, it'll run, but I give myself the option to turn it off. In case you're going through a car show or something, you don't want your compressor running through the show or whatever reason. I just have a manual override, um, which then goes over to this side. This is your pressure switch. This tells it to turn on and off. So uh, what happens is that switch just grounds at, I think it's 160 pounds or something. So that tells the relay to turn on and off, or tells the compressor to run. Uh, yeah, that's the basic principle of it. The only thing I do is I put an interrupt from the keyed power, just so I can turn it on and off manually, provided the, the ground isn't triggered from the switch, which will just tell it to run. Um, I zapped in the bed rails, or that makes sense. The floor, we basically tacked in some uh, angle iron on either side so we can put a sheet of wood over. Uh, yeah, kind of does it for back here for the most part. Uh, I still got to wire up the taillights. So now that I remember that, I'm probably going to do that right away. And then I'm going to go inside and finish plumbing the rest of the stuff. So I'm working on the seat. Uh, turns out a two by three is the right height. So I have some stock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a complete rail. Uh, like the rails are still under the seat, although I don't really know if he needs to adjust it. He seems fine when he's sitting in there. But uh, I'm just going to make one solid two by three going across so that I can burn to the floor and then I can bolt the seat to it. Uh, so essentially, I'm just going to cut that up. Here's what we got. So this is going to be the floor stock or the seat rail. So just got to do an angle cut, do another cut. Then I got both sides. I'll mark them, drill, tap them, so I can bolt in some. I can bolt the seat down and call that part done. So, you can see I got my seat rail kind of half made. Um, I got the pull, you can't see, but there's a little bit of excess old bracketry I got to get out of there. And then I can kind of zap that seat in place. The upper part bolts in, so if I weld the bottom, should be fine. And then uh, now I got to do my brake pedal underneath there. I got to do the brake switch. That's next. Once I get the back bit out of here, and uh, get her zapped in. So I gotta build a PCM mount. Normally I use the ones from the S10, but it's not a lot of room in this side to do it. So I'm gonna build a stand-up mount that just sits here that I can just tie the PCM to. Uh, it sits good here, so what I'm gonna do is just make a mount that comes up and down and then just bolts down to the fender. So I'm gonna make a simple mount. It's gonna have a flange on the bottom I'm going to angle the, 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 the sides, just give it a bit of a kink there, just so the module can't go left and right. But uh, I'll cut this out, bend it up, and show you what it looks like. So, here's what I made up. Pretty straightforward. It's going to bolt into there, and then I'll just strap the PCM to it. Should be good. I'm going to splash a little paint on there, and then uh, throw it in the truck. Okay, PCM is mounted, the E-fan is mounted, or wired. Uh, I did the brake switch inside. Uh, I still gotta do the seat. And... What else do we gotta do? Bolt the box down right, 
and uh, mount these running boards. So, close. Getting there. So, my list is pretty short. I'm waiting for a door latch. I don't know. It's a brand new one, but there's something just totally screwed on it. I want to see how he wants the seat mounted. Whether he cares if it's welded or bolted down. So, I'll wait for that. Uh, and I need a tail light. Because I don't know. It's got an LED light, but for some reason it just shorts out when I plug it in. So, I don't know if or what there is to check. So, I think it's just broken. That's all there is to it. Uh, yeah. Beyond that, I gotta do glass. And I really hate doing glass. Well, the rubber glass type anyways. So, I guess I'm gonna cut this out. Check the rubber I got first, make sure it's good. And then I'll uh, try to get her in there. My goodness, I've never had rubber this thinking hard. I can't run a razor blade through it. I've actually got to cut it with the friggin' zip cut. How crazy is that? So, I'll keep struggling with this here and then uh, show you what it looks like when she's out. Okay, I know everybody's gonna tell me I should be using the rope, but I've been doing this for years, usually by myself, it's just easier. I find I can control what I'm doing. I just have my little bent screwdriver and I can just walk the rubber across nicely. It's kind of always worked for me. I do know about the rope trick. Where you put the rope in the rubber and then you pull it all the way through. It's easier. This I just feel I have whatever. It works for me and this is what I've always kind of done. If I got two people, I don't mind the rope, but it's kind of hard doing by yourself. Um, yeah, getting there. It's actually going in pretty good, so I'm not too angered with this. <laughs> so I'll keep plugging away at this and then work my way up and then get the tops in. And then the front window's done and then I gotta still do the back one.
Well, that's another one in the books. Uh, pretty minor stuff left to do on it, but uh, yeah, she's a dunner. So, well, till next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.